Yo, what's going on you guys? So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to throw a sidearm. So first, let's talk about the grip. So I actually use two different grips and they're pretty similar. So anything slower, my fingers are pretty much flat and I just use two fingers to hold it. But then when I'm using something like a driver, something I'm going to throw pretty much flat and super hard, I kind of go like this a little bit. And for me, that just gives me a little bit more power, but my middle finger isn't all the way sitting on the rim. It's kind of like just the tip of my middle finger is pushing on the rim. So now that we talk about grip, let's talk about the sidearm throw. So let's break it down. So I think for the actual arm motion of the throw, there's three parts. There's the swing, right? There's the swing for the sidearm. There's the push. And of course, the flick. The flick is where you know, all the magic happens. You could probably throw a flick like this, maybe 200 feet by itself. So I think the key to a very good sidearm throw is to combine all three. So you have the swing, right? But you also have the push, and at the very end you have the flick. And once you time it all right, that's when you can start throwing sidearm easily over 400 feet. All right, now that we talked about the three parts that go into the sidearm throw with the upper body, let's talk about, I think, the single most important thing about sidearm to think of. So whatever angle that you're gonna throw the disc on, your body has to match it. So if you're throwing a hyzer, you're gonna be down here. If you're throwing an anhyzer, you're gonna be up here and then everything in the middle. And of course, roller, you're gonna be standing straight up. So now let's move on to footwork. And after that, I'll probably get into some things you're gonna have questions about. All right guys, for footwork on the sidearm, we're gonna keep it really simple. Basically more steps for the longer throws and then less steps for the shorter throws. So let's just go through a sidearm throw. So I'm gonna take two steps for the sidearm throw. Basically, I'm gonna step with the same foot as my throwing hand. And then I'm gonna get my body ready into that position. So it's matching the angle that I'm gonna throw the disc on. Right, so this is a very understable DX arrow. So I'm gonna have to end up like this. So when I'm about to take my final step, I put my heel down first, and obviously this is really fast. You're not gonna actually put your heel down consciously and then like lean on the balls of your feet and then throw. It's gonna be like pretty much at the same time. So when I'm about to step down, like the heel touches the ground, I'm in this position and then when I like lean forward on my foot, that's when the throw happens. It's got to happen smooth and obviously this is going to take practice, but it's not too complicated and I know if you work at it, you can get it done. So you can see for each throw, I am matching the angle of the disc with my body. I'm not squatting down to cheat my way into the getting in the right angle with my body. I see a lot of people doing that. They're losing a lot of power this way. Even pros are doing this, so don't feel too bad if you're doing it yourself. But I just wanted to show you with my method, I'm getting to the same landing zone as the top pros are when they're playing this same hole at Toboggan. This is the exact same spot pretty much where Simon Lazat landed on his first round. Now the second shot here is similar to the first shot, but one thing I want to point out is both of these shots are very far. I mean, very good shots in my my opinion and I only took two or three steps for them so I just want to point out you don't need to have a run-up for sidearm that's one of the big key things I'm trying to point out and this very last throw I want to point out this is more of like the flat angle sidearm you can see I'm still kind of leaned over because I am throwing a putter not all my shots are hyzer flips, but I didn't really want to show any, you know, little anhyzer flicks because those are a lot easier to throw rather than these shots, which I think are really going to teach you how to throw sidearm correctly. All right, now that we broke down the sidearm throw, let's go into a few things you guys might have questions about, and then I'm going to give you my number one tip for practicing sidearm. So the first thing is Paul McBeth's throw. So a lot of people, they watch Paul McBeth, so they're trying to emulate him. And he does something like this, right? He'll go like this and then kind of flick it. So I think this is wrong because it's not incorporating the swing of the sidearm. He's got like the push and the flick. He's got like that part of it. And honestly, it's not comfortable for me because I kind of learned sidearm, you know, going like this, like a million trillion times. And then I finally got it. So personally, I feel like Paul McBeth's sidearm is missing out on that one key component. But honestly, if it's a utility shot for you and you're not quite a, you know, combining all three parts, Paul McBeth's sidearm isn't a bad substitute for the time being. Now let's go on to a second thing that I see tons of people do. So 
like I said, your body has to match the angle of the disc. Now, I'm like this when I'm throwing most of my drives because I'm throwing it so hard. And I'm throwing max weight discs and I know they're gonna flip up. A lot of people will get like super low when they throw their sidearm, kind of like crouching down. You're kind of losing a lot of power and honestly, it just hurts. It doesn't feel good. Like how am I gonna throw super hard sidearm like this? In my opinion, the only two times you should ever get low, kind of like this, is one, if you're throwing under something, like really low ceiling, or if you're throwing down a hill. Otherwise, you should be staying straight up the whole time because all you have to do is just match your body to the angle you're throwing the disc on. And finally, my tip for learning sidearm in the field is make sure you go grab a really understable and slow disc. So this DX0, for example, is super crazy flippy. It's one of my favorite discs, but if you're throwing a really understable disc, it's gonna force you to learn to match the angle of the disc with your body so you can have a proper sidearm throw. And then once you finally are able to match the angle and have a smooth throw, you're gonna throw it about 260 feet. And that's when you know you're starting to have a good sidearm. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Make sure to leave a like if you did. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good one. Peace.